there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Here with the You Are Delver match. I'm actually going to do this in replay mode. I did do a live commentary, and the commentary was pretty bad as I was really late in the day. And then me and MTG Card Pricer, he's actually the site owner of mtgprice.com started talking and then it like went to time and it was just really the editing would be horrible that's just what i'll say right now so i'm just going to do a replay of the ur delver since this is a quick match anyway and i'd rather have you guys watch a like 10 minute video rather than a 40 minute video with what went down with the forbidden uh artist deck so anyway we'll skip ahead here i see an opening hand with a god the shrine a windswept Heath and Soul Ward, Nilness of the Ranks, Sutra Priest. This is just an amazing hand. So we will definitely go ahead and start off with the... Um, actually, this is game number two. I hate when uh, Wizards does this. So anyway, let's just scrap this. I'm actually going to load up game number one. Or let's go to, to game number two. Or t See here on... We're looking at... Oh, no, that's not even going to let me put it up here so anyway it's it's gonna be game number two is actually game number one and game number one is actually game number two good old MTGO with the little bugs they haven't sorted out uh, anywho so this is gonna be game number one where I do believe we, we still keep a nice little hand here yeah there we go 25 minutes on the clocks for each person there is a, a expedition map to go get the Forbidden Orchard we have a Soul Warden, we have a, a Sutra Priest, we have the Illness of the Rank. This is a great hand. Um, again, all we need to do is... No, we actually have everything we need. So, we'll go ahead and... He starts off with a Scalding Tarn and the first turn Delver, which is the one draw in Delver that's difficult for any Soul Sister build to actually beat. So, that's a little bit troubling, but we do have the Soul Warden in another Thespian stage. So, we'll go ahead and just put the, the Soul Warden out. And Delver does decide to flip, I believe, off of Serum Visions. And he does cast the funniest card here, which is the Young Pyromancer. In my commentary, I actually called him, like, he is going to be so upset when <laughs> he sees what I play this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and throw out the Illness of the Rink. I got to go to God of the Shrine, so I'm down to a 15 already. And we'll go ahead and hit the Expedition map. So Young Pyromancer is completely locked down. Um... And in the comment commentary here, I just like I I apologize to him. Like it really is a combo piece because again, this is game number one, and <laughs> he's playing against an unknown deck here. And I throw out an illness of the ranks main board, so that was pretty funny. Anyway, so he remands the the priest, but it does you don't see the interaction here. It does create an elemental token which immediately dies by illness of the ranks and at least gives me a life. So I decided to at least spend my mana and throw out the other illness of the rank and then attack in pretty funny that him by fetching and shocking twice he's already down to 14 and a 13 our life totals are pretty uh similar but this is getting scary he's down to a i'm down to a six we get a blood artist here and another thespian stage so i'm just going to go for the double double suture priest to try to gain a bunch of life and this one does hit and we're going to put the other one out as well and this one, I believe, he does. Um, no, he murders cuts on the Sutra Priest. So, I think I'd rather actually have a Soul Warden at this point. Because Sutra Priest does not gain me life when he actually casts a card. And I was able to gain a life off that murderous cut. So, I'm back up to a 9. And I decided to take it to a 4, but it's getting quite scary. I'm going to go an Expedition Map for Forbidden Orchard. And I think the right play here is just to cast a Pride Mate. Oh no, Blood Arse I go for. Maybe maybe Pride Mate was the right play. I was just worried about it getting countered. And I need to get as much uh, value off the Forbidden Orchard as possible. So I leave back the Sutra Priest. I think, man, I really need to block the Young Pyromancer. But in hindsight, I don't. Because he can't even cast anything without me gaining uh, two life and doing a damage to him. And I can actually, even right here, get off some damage with tapping the Forbidden Orchard. And and again, Sutra Priest gives me some value from dying with Blood Artist, but I probably want the Young Pyromancer alive because he, he was worried about casting spells. And he does still doesn't find his other land and plays a Delver of Secrets 
But, I mean, I still gained some life, and now Pride Mate's going to get big. But I'm worried about the Delver flipping and then just a bolt to the face. And he wouldn't have been able to bolt to the face if I would have kept my or kept his young Pyromancer alive because it would have gained me two life immediately from the Sutra Priest and the Blood Artist. So, because a card would come into play, it would die, and then Blood Artist would ping him down to damage. But I thought, you know what, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and block it, and then... You know, now I'm really far ahead. We're going to, you know, tap for a mana, and it puts another guy into play, which gives me another life, which would put me up to 10, and then 11 from the Blood Arse, and then put me at a 5-5 five, five Pride Mate. And then he does not draw into anything that saves him, or at least he doesn't think he's going to. I think he could have easily played it out. But as you can see, his time clock was already getting down. Uh, he was trying to, you know, juggle too many things at once. Uh, so we, we'll go on to the next match. So... This one was match number two, so I brought in like, um, I can't remember what I brought in. I think I brought in a Ghostly Prison. I'm not sure exactly the the cards that I brought in here. But again, we were chatting throughout this game, and so it was really, really messy um, commentary. And he goes for first turn Serum Visions, but this was an amazing draw. I could go first turn Inquisition. But I decided, hey, you might as well get a Soul Warden out and Johnny's Pride Mate. This is the draw that you like to see with Soul Sisters. is a Soul Warden into a Johnny's Pride Mate. And he misses his land drop, which is devastating with the Serum Visions. You keep a Serum Vision hands because you're most likely going to hit a land. And then we're able to get out a 3-3 a of Johnny's Pride Mate on turn number 2. So now he's got to handle it with a Bolt immediately. Like, he has to handle this or he's going to get out of his, his comfort zone here. He does put a Steam Vents into play untapped, so I'm thinking there is going to be a Bolt. And so I'm in Inquisition for it, and he terminates the, the Pride Mate. But we see we see a Bolt. It was a Bolt, a Double Bolt, Double Snapcaster is left in his hand. And I took the Electrolyze. I thought that Electrolyze is the card that would get him back in the in the game the best. Because usually what, what it would end up doing is killing a Soul Warden and a Priest for one. And then also drawing him a card. So that's definitely not something I want to see. So we do need to draw into a Forbidden Orchard here, and then we're golden with the Illness of the Ranks. But he's down to a 16 amount and 18. He can't really cast anything here. I know he's just going to start bolting off stuff. Yep, he double bolts off, kills both of those. But we get the Expedition map now, and I will go get the Forbidden Orchard. And now we're pretty golden, because if we get like another Soul Sisters, we're in great shape. So I know he's probably going to... Um, I thought that he should end it, he should Serum Visions here off of uh, a Snapcaster. He's keeping his Snapcasters up to kill whatever I bring out. I think the right play is just to draw cards with a Serum Visions, try to set up more more plays. It is, I get a Sutra Priest here, so I'm going to bait it out. I know that I at least get a life out of this when he Snapcaster bolts, or two life out of this actually. So we'll tap right now for the Zealous Persecution. He'll bolt off the Sutra Priest. And then it'll do another damage to him when the Snapcaster comes into play. So, got value out of it. He's down to a 12 or down to an 11, actually. And I know he's got one Snapcaster and one other in his hand, so he's going to attack him with the Snapcaster. I'm down to a 16. And I want, really want to bait off the Zealous Persecution. And this play here is just one of my better plays. So I Sutra Priest, I'm like, you know what? I bet with the mana open... He's going to Snapcast or Electrolyze and divide the damage. And then the Zealous Persecution is just going to be an absolute blowout. And that's what ends up happening. So he's going to Snapcaster and he's going to target the Electrolyze. Now he's going to decide to target one at the Sutra Priest and one at me. And then in response to that, I'm going to be able to, to Zealous Persecution, give my dude plus one plus one, give all his creatures negative one, negative one save my Sutra Priest, and do a lot of damage. Um, well, actually, just be able to keep the Sutra Priest alive, which means I've got the combo with the Illness of the Ranks and Sutra Priest to just kind of tax him down. And yeah, both those go to the graveyard. And my Sutra Priest lives. And ha, MD Joe messes up and decides to... Uh, the replay decides to go corrupt. But anyway, he ends up scooping after that because he draws into another card that is not like i can't remember what i drew into yeah the the replay is completely uh broken here but i think i i draw into another 
Um, well, the Sutra Priest is alive, and I think I actually draw into another Sutra Priest after that for my third uh, Sutra Priest. But, yeah, the game ends there quickly after that. But big shout-out to MTG Card Pricer. He, he's the side owner of MTG Price. He actually gave me the... Um, you know, we got to talking and, and whatnot. He asked me if I use MTG Price, and I said I absolutely do use MTG Price. I call it the... It's one of my holy trinity of websites I use for speculation. First of all, MTG Goldfish by far is my favorite um, site. www.mtggoldfish.com It is just so streamlined with their, their pricing. You can look at MTGO prices and paper prices. It's all right there um, in front of you. And, but what I do like about MTG prices, it has a ton of analytics as far as, like it has buy list prices, so you can go to different vendors and do buy list prices. It also has vendor prices, what they're selling it for, like Channel Fireball, Strike Zone, Abu Games, like all, all the, the major players. It shows what they are selling the card for, but it also shows what they've sold it for in the past. So you can see if it's trending up or trending down based upon actual vendors, not just the TCG mid like MTG Goldfish uses. So... MG Price uses a the the whole of the market. It'll 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 average all the prices from all the vendors, eBay, TCG, and try to give you what's called a fair price. And I'll have to I'll do a review on MTG Price sometime and show you exactly how to use it. But they also have the the Pro Trader, and I was given a free six months just from talking with him. He's like, yeah, go check it out. Tell me what could um what we could do better on the site with the the Pro Trader, and so far I've been pretty impressed with Pro Trader. I'm gonna ask him for permission to actually do a video with Pro Trader and just show you exactly what it it offers. And if he's if he's if he gives the the, the okay, I'll I'll do a review of the Pro Trader, see if it's worth it or not for you guys to sign up for Pro Trader. Again, I'm not sponsored whatsoever by MTGPrice.com. It just was a friendly game. We got to talking and seemed like a pretty cool guy. And then you know he's like, hey, check out you know, check it out, tell me what you think, you know, and when you're a personality like I am, like, you know, I have a bit, a large YouTube channel, people do tend to, you know, throw things at you and say, hey, just check it out, do a review and stuff like that, so again, no strings attached to it, I'm not trying to push MTG price on you, anyway, and just out of fairness, my last, out of the, what I call the holy trinity for uh, price, for websites that I use to actually price cards is mtgstocks.com and I've done a review in the past on my channel with MTG Stocks. What I really like the, about MTG Stocks is it has some analytic tools like the the one that I use all the time is highs and lows. It shows you the all-time highs and all-time lows of a card. It'll actually give you like a little alert like today is for example if it was like Forbidden Orchard this is the lowest Forbidden Orchard's ever been. And it, will, it shows you a good time to pick up cards and a good time to sell cards. A lot of times when they're on the, the all-time high list, it's like, well, it's hit its max or it's hit near its max. It's time for me to sell. So th that's kind of MTG Goldfish, MTG Price, and MTG Stocks are probably my what I consider the holy trinity of speculation. So anyway, big shout-out to MTG Card Pricer and his MTG Price site. I use it all the time. This was an amazing, amazing, uh, fun, friendly match. And it was he didn't get salty or whatnot from a first turn illness of the ranks against a young pyromancer. It, the conversation was great. Again, I'm not gonna. Well, that's one of the reasons why I decided to do a replay. Is there was in the commentary there was a lot of uh, kind of personal information and whatnot being shared back and forth, and just out of you know uh, the nature of of how much it would take me to edit that out, I, I decided to do the replay. Hope you guys don't mind. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.